Good evening, children. Let me get started. We'll talk later. Good evening, children. Yeah. We have completed uh, knowing our numbers, uh, but we're going to see some uh, word problems from NCRT. Right? Yeah. We are not going to write anything now. We'll discuss. Uh, I'll upload this in the portal and uh, this will be your weekend assignment. OK, so the details I'll give you on WhatsApp. We'll not uh, discuss that now. Uh, so now we're not going to write anything. We're just going to discuss. If you have any doubts, you can get them clarified. OK, yeah. OK, I'll tell you. you I have shared your credentials, right? Your credentials, your username and password. You don't have. Then I'll check if I've not generated, I'll generate it and give it to you. And then once I share it with you, I'll tell you how to use it also. So maybe tomorrow sometime I'll let you know. OK, you have school tomorrow. OK, I'll call you. I'll call you once it's ready. I'll call you and let you know. OK. Yeah. So see the first question. A book exhibition was held for four days in a school. The number of tickets sold at the counter on the first, second and third. On the first, second, third and final day was respectively those four numbers there. Find the total number of tickets sold on all the four days. Easy, right? So what is the mathematical operation here? Addition. It's addition. OK, so how do you present the answer? So this is how you present the answer because we know it is addition, but presentation is important, right? So number of tickets sold on the first day, number of tickets sold on the second day, number of tickets sold on the third day, number of tickets sold on the fourth day. Then finally, we know that the operation is addition. So you say total, total number of tickets sold on the four days is equal to, you'll have to find the sum of these four numbers, correct? Love to find the sum of these four numbers, and that adds to uh, seven thousand seven hundred seven. This is simple for you, right? Okay. Shaker is a famous cricket player. He has so far scored six thousand nine hundred and eighty runs in Test matches. He wishes to complete ten thousand runs. How many more runs? Does he need? How many more runs does he need? He's already scored 6,980 runs, but his target is 10,000 runs. His target is 10,000 runs. So how many more runs does he need? What is the operation here? Subtraction, subtraction. OK, so how do you present the answer? Runs Shaker has scored so far. Runs Shaker wishes to complete. Difference, difference, 10,000 minus 6,980, 3020. Therefore, 3,020 runs are needed to complete 10,000 runs. Correct? The question is, how many, how many more runs does he need? How many more runs does he need? So, 3,020 runs are needed to complete 10,000 runs. That is, he needs to score he needs to score 3,020 runs more, correct? In an election, the successful candidate, meaning the candidate who has won the election. So for a particular, uh, you know, uh, for a particular, uh, say, post, there may be uh, a few contestants. Now four or five people stand. Four or five people may want to get, uh, you know, elected for that particular post. So they compete with one another. Public cast their votes, correct? So what is the uh, uh, meaning? Who can uh, vote in India? What is the uh, voting age? 18. So uh, citizens. Indian citizens 18 who have completed 18 years are eligible to vote, correct? Yeah. So
So in an election, the successful candidate, successful candidate is the person who has won the election. How can, how does he or she win the election? Because they have got more votes from the public. When the counting happens, this particular candidate has got more number of votes from the public. So he is declared the winner and he is elected for that post. So in an election, the successful candidate registered 5,77,500 votes. Registered means he has got against his name, against his not name. So in India, it is all, uh, you know, the signs. Every party has a symbol. Every party has a symbol like, correct? We can see the lotus. Somebody has lotus, somebody has ox and uh, whatever, whatever. OK, so against his particular uh, symbol, he has 5,77,500 votes and his nearest rival. That is. The person who has just lost to him, the nearest rival means uh, supposing uh, four people had contested. OK, and he's he's stopping right because he's got the most number of votes. The person just after him is his rival, the nearest rival. Rival is not enemy actually, but rival is the person who's compete who had competed. See in English, what do we mean by rivalry? Rivalry meaning enmity kind of enmity. But here in elections, it's not enmity. Rival meaning that competitor, correct? That competitor. The other candidates, the other four, the other. If supposing four had stood for the elections, the remaining three candidates are his rivals. Are his rivals? Yeah. So and his nearest rival, that is the one in the second place. He's stopping the one in the second place. That is his nearest rival. Secured 3,48,700 votes. By what margin? So it's like, you know, uh, a, a student gets 100 on 100. And after that, uh, you know, the second topper is 97. So by how many marks did that, uh, that, the, did that student top the class? By three marks. See, the highest, uh, the student who's got the highest has scored 100 on 100. The next highest is 97. Correct. Now, so so that that student is the nearest competitor. So by what margin did this student top the class by three marks? 100 minus 97, three marks. He's topped the class. So like that. Subtraction, subtraction. So by what margin did the successful candidate win the election? By what margin? By how many votes? By what margin meaning by how many votes did the successful candidate win the election? Do we understand the question? So like the successful candidate say has got 100 votes. OK, 100 votes and the nearest rival had secured 90 votes. So by what margin did the successful candidate win the election? 10 because 100 minus 90, 10 votes. This person has got 90. He got 10 more and so he won the elections. This person has got 90. His nearest rival has got 90. He, he got he. It's a very so he this guy's got 10 uh, votes more and thereby he wins the elections. So he wins by a margin of 10 votes. He wins by a margin of 10 votes. OK, so that's the question. I'll read it again in an election. The successful candidate, meaning the candidate who won the elections, the successful candidate registered 5,77,500 votes and his nearest rival secured 3,48,700 votes. By what margin did the successful candidate win the election? So the operation is subtraction. All right. So are you presented? Votes registered by the successful candidate. Votes registered by the successful candidate. Votes registered by the nearest rival. Margin by which the successful candidate won margin by which the successful candidate won. And you'll have to find the difference. All right. You cannot write, you have to do the perform that in the rough column. See, you cannot write the answer straight away like what you see here. Here you can see straight, next step I have the answer. No, I have done this work. So that you don't see here, that's all. Calculations have to be done. So you cannot write this answer directly. Correct. You have to subtract in the rough column, get the answer and write it here. All right.
is Kirti. Yeah? Okay, Kirti Bookstore sold books worth rupees two lakhs eighty five thousand eight hundred ninety one in the first week of June. So it's a bookstore, Kirti Bookstore. They sold books worth rupees two lakhs eighty five thousand eight hundred ninety one in the first week of June. And books worth rupees four lakhs seven sixty eight in the second week of the month, meaning second week of June. How much was the sale for the two weeks together? How much was the sale for the two weeks together? So what is the operation? Addition, addition. In which week was the sale greater? In which week was the sale greater? First week or second week? Second week. In which week was the uh, sale greater? Second week. And by how much subtraction? By how much means you'll have to subtract, correct? By how much you'll have to subtract? So first it is addition, no? Why? Because uh, you have to find the total sales. You'll have to find the total sales in the two weeks. So first it is addition. So see, price of books sold in the first week. Price of books sold in the second week. Price of books sold in two weeks. And you have to add. Of, of course, you'll have to add here in the ref column and then write the answer here. OK, then therefore, so answering the first question, um, where is it, how much was the sale for the two weeks together? We are on, this is the first question. This is the first. This is the till here is the information. Till here is some information. There is no question from here to here. From here to here is simply some information. This is the first question. How much was the sale for the two weeks together? That's the first question in this here. So therefore the sale in two weeks is of rupees. OK, you can just say is rupees also. Or is of rupees. Understand? Now, next question. In which week was the sale greater? So since this number is greater than this number, since this number is greater than this number, sale in the second week is greater. Correct? So we answer the second question also. And by how much is the third part? And by how much? So difference in the sales amount. You don't have to write these statements again. You don't have to repeat price of the book sold in the first week, second week. You don't have to repeat that. You've already written. You've already expressed what these numbers stand for. What is this number? What is this number? You've already expressed it here. You've already expressed it here. OK. You've already expressed it, uh, expressed it here. So you just have to say difference in the sales amount because the operation is subtraction. So difference in the sales amount is equal to. Find the difference. All right. Subtract. So you'll have to work it here, children. Subtraction, we need to do it here. OK. Therefore, say uh, so and by how much sale in the second week is more by. Just answer this call, just go to the next one. So these are the digits given to you and you have to form the greatest number and the smallest number and find the difference. So see, so from, you know, as early as six standard, we should. 
get into the habit of reading the question till we understand. The question should be understood. Sometimes we just remember something here and there and we just, you know, like go to the next one. It's not like that. You need to read the question. If certain words you don't understand, you need to find, you need to take the help of the elders at home or you can help yourself. You know, you can use a dictionary or whatever and get the meanings, understand the question and then uh, you, you need to move on to the answer. So what is the question here? Find the difference. So we need to subtract. Find the difference means we need to subtract between the greatest and the least five digit number. So as soon as you read this, you should not write the greatest and the least five digit number. The greatest five digit number is 99,999 and the least five digit number is 10,000. We should not write that you should, the greatest and least five digit number that can be written using these digits. And you should use each digit only once. All right. So you know how to do it, right? So arrange the digits in the arrange the digits from big to small. Arrange the digits from big to small. That is the biggest number and small to big. That is in the descending order, descending order, ascending order. Correct. You know that, right? All of you. Seven, six, four, three, two in the descending order. Big to small when you arrange the digits, that's the greatest number. Small to big. When you arrange the digits small to big, ascending order, you get the smallest number. You understand these two children? Then find the difference. Many you'll have to subtract. Hi, Deepthi. Good evening. Uh, yeah, your mom told me that you had uh, a visit to the dentist and that you will not be able to participate in today's class. That's fine. So please listen and um, in case you have some questions, you can just uh, make a note of that in your notebook and uh, get it clarified in the next class. Since you cannot, uh, you know, like uh, communicate today, you can just make a note of it and ask me in the next class. All right. So uh, what we've been doing so far is, uh, Deepthi, uh, this is uh, knowing our numbers. NCRT, first chapter, knowing our numbers. Uh, uh, Deepthi, just acknowledge, just say yes, if you're able to hear me. Softly. Yes, ma'am. Okay, darling. Okay, darling. Take it. Yeah. So we just started uh, uh, with uh, knowing our numbers and we are revising, uh, not revising actually, we did some of the word, uh, you know, problems from uh, knowing our numbers. This is NCRT. We have finished the chapter knowing our numbers. This is from NCRT. NCRT, I think this is a second exercise. I prepared the answers also. So we just, uh, we just, uh, you know, trying to understand them. And this will be a weekend assignment. I'll share this uh, a presentation in the portal and um, uh, you will have to complete this in your notebook as a, as a weekend assignment. All those details I'll post on WhatsApp. So this is what we started today, knowing our numbers. Exercise 1.2. So how many questions are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We finished 5. We discussed 5 of them. Uh, children are not writing in the class. We're just discussing. Yes, sir. Uh, how yeah, many we... questions are there in total? Oh, I don't know. In total, seven. Okay, more than eleven, darling. I don't know. Yes, I'm uh, supposed to. Uh, one to, to five. One to five. You can use the recording. I'll share the recording with you. Yes, I'm the rest of us are supposed to do it in a notebook. I'll share the details on WhatsApp. Don't worry. I, I see you missed so, from one to five. That's all. The rest yes. of the details as to what you should do with this, I'll let you know on WhatsApp. All right. Yes. Sir. Yeah. Okay. A machine on an average manufactures 2,825 screws a day. How many screws did it produce in the month of January 2006? I'm so to you what. Uh... The questions like the answers you have shared in the hotel on Wednesday, I have not done correcting them. So I oh. correct them and I'm supposed to do all these. I'm supposed to write the question and answer in the notebook, right? Any type? No, no, you said you did not check the answers with uh, the answers I posted, right? I'm still correcting them. Okay, okay, take your time. Anytime you can ask me your doubts. Any yes, class you can ask me about. Do all these questions, questions and answers are supposed to be in a notebook, right? Yeah, yeah, yes. Yes, thank you. Okay. 
A machine on an average manufactures 2,825 screws a day. How many screws did it produce in the month of January 2006? So how many days in the month of January? 31 days in the month of January. Okay, it man manufactures 2,825 screws in one day. One day, 2,825 screws. 31 days, multiplication. So the operation is multiplication. Because one day, 2,825 screws. For 31 days, it'll be 2825 plus 2825 plus 2825 plus 2825, 31 times. And we know that repeated addition is multiplication. Repeated addition is multiplication. So it's multiplication. Okay, I, I'll put the answer here. It's not here. You don't see the answer here, actually. I'll put it up there. When I upload it in the portal, the answer will be there. How will the statements look like? Uh, number of screws manufactured in one day. Then number of screws that can, uh, okay, number of screws produced or manufactured in one day. Number of screws produced or manufactured in 31 days. Multiplication and the answer. So when I upload it in the portal, the answer will be here. All right. And we all know it is multiplication. Okay. Next one. A merchant had rupees 78,592 with her. Okay, she had this much money with her. She placed an order for purchasing 40 radio sets of rupees 1,200 each. How much money will remain with her after the purchase? So she had, she had 78,592 rupees with her. She wants to buy 40 radio sets and each radio set costs 1,200. How much money will remain with her after the purchase? So what will you do first? We have to multiply. Yes, cost of one radio set is 1,200. So the cost of 40 radio sets will be into 40. Okay, and this product will be 48,000. So the money remaining with her will be 78, uh, 592 minus 48,000, correct? Cost of one radio, cost of 40 radio sets, total money with the merchant, money left with the merchant after the purchase of the radio sets is equal to this one minus this one. Statements are important, very, very important. Statements help you express what you've understood. No, statements, writing statements help you express what you have understood. See, now you may have understood, but supposing your friend wants to know how it is done, then you need to use some words, right? You cannot use numbers and teach her. You cannot just say numbers. You cannot teach using numbers. You need to use words to teach maths. Yes or no? Yeah. So only when you know to write, uh, you know, the only when you understand the question and you are comfortable writing the statements for the numbers there, can you explain to your friend? Otherwise, you will only tell her, no, that 1,200 is there. No, you multiply that with 40. Okay, you get one answer. And if she asks you why, that's what you take that number and you multiply, you'll get one answer. See, that's all. You'll only talk with the numbers. You cannot express yourself. You must write. So you must tell her that that's the cost of one radio set. So writing statements for the numbers help you help you to express yourself. So you're writing all this because this is how you'll teach your friend. If you were to teach your friend who's finding it difficult, this is how you'll teach her. So that's what you're writing here. What is it? Why should you write cost of one radio set? So you're teaching her. See, cost of one radio set is 1,200. So the cost of 40 radio sets will be 1,200 into 40. Then how much money does the merchant have? Will you ask her or no? Okay, how, many, how, much, much, how, many, how much money does the merchant have? So she'll say 78,592. So what the, you know, like you just imagine you're teaching somebody. So when you teach, you assume a, meaning a, a sequence, right? In that sequence, you'll have to answer the question. It's not like, what should I do first? What should I write first? So you should just pretend in your mind, just, uh, you know, uh, pretend as if you're teaching somebody. So from where will you start? From where will you start? So from 
the cost of one radio set, then 40 radio sets, you'll get the answer. Then, you know, you have to subtract. Then you'll ask, so how much money does the merchant have with her? 78,592. Now, how much has she spent already? 48,000. So the difference, the money left will be the difference. So exactly what, so that is the sequence in which you present the answer. You must actually be into the question. Understand? Okay. A student multiplied 7,236 by 65 instead of multiplying by 56. The student multiplied the number by 65 instead of 56. So 56 is the correct number. But by mistake, he or she took it as 65. A student multiplies a student multiplied 7,236 by 65 instead of 56. So the correct number is 56 by mistake 65. OK. By how much was his answer greater than the correct answer? Well, it will be greater, no, because you have to multiply by 56. But by mistake, you've taken 65. So actually your product, so your new product, Meaning on your incorrect product, one second, your incorrect product is more than the correct product, correct? Let's use the terms incorrect product, incorrect product. Incorrect product, correct product. So what is the incorrect product? The incorrect product is incorrect product. Is equal to 7, 2, 3, 6 into 65. This is the incorrect. This is wrong. It's incorrect. What's the correct product? The correct product is 7, 2, 3, 6 into 56. This is the correct product. So you can see into 65 into 56. Definitely this product is more. This one is this one will be less. That's the question. By how much was his answer greater than the correct answer? This is the correct answer. But his answer is more. By how much more is, is it is the question? Do we understand? Yes. Correct. That's why there's a hint given there. Do you need to do both the multiplications? Do you need to do both the multiplications? Yes. OK, that is one way of doing so you can do it even without doing both the multiplications. You can do this without doing both the multiplications. You're right over here. You're right, but you can also do it without finding the uh, without performing the two multiplications. All right. So how do we do that? So uh, so what we think has to be done is uh, we need to multiply 7, 2, 3, 6 by 65. I'll just use a calculator. 7, 2, 3, 6 into 65. Okay. 4, 7, 0, 3, 4, 0. Then 7, 2, 3, 6 into 56. Okay, 7, 2 into 56, which is 40, 52, 16. And then the difference, uh, that is, it's greater by, you should find the difference, which is minus 4, 4, 7, 0, 3, 4, 0. 65. Okay, so... Uh, this is the, uh, you know, this is how we think it has to be done. But you can also, you're going to learn a different way or a simplified way of getting the same correct answer. This is correct. Find the, this is the first product which you have to find. Then you'll have to find this product and then you'll have to subtract because the question is by how much was his answer greater than the correct answer? So you'll have to subtract this right. Let's see here. 
Okay, incorrect product, correct product. This we understood. Now the difference. What is the difference? It is this one minus this one. The greater product minus the smaller product. So you can see it. This one minus this one. Correct? Is understood? Now look at this rule. There is a rule like this. When you have A into B. When you see here, this is a product A into B. This is another product. Distributive property of multiplication over subtraction. Distributive property of multiplication over subtraction. Very good. All right. So uh, this is a product A into B. This is another product A into C. And when it's connected by the minus sign, it is a difference of these two products. Difference of these two products. Correct? A into B is one product. A into C is another product. Minus in the middle, meaning difference of the two products. OK, and Tanya rightly uh, reminded us that it is the distributive law of multiplication over subtraction. This is nothing but the distributive law. Distributive law of multiplication over subtraction. So A into B minus A into C can be written as A into B minus C. A, write this common factor once. A into B minus C, B minus C. A into B minus A into C is equal to A into because A is common. That's why A into A into B minus C. OK. See, here. this is common. A is common. Write it once into B minus C, B minus C in the bracket. OK, so we are going to use a distributive law to work this. So where by the distributive, see this is A. This is A into B minus a into c why are we calling c which is repeated that is a whichever number is repeated that is a so which is the number repeated here 7236 7236 that is a a is the number that is repeated okay so this one is a see here? you can see the same number here a this is b and this is not b this is a different number so c c same number, same letter you should use. For the same number, you should use the same letter. If they're different, you should use different letters. So now, what is A then? Where A is equal to 7,236, B is equal to 65, and C is equal to 56, correct? So what is A into B? What is A into B minus A into C? The answer is A into B minus C. So write this A, A into B minus C, B minus C. See, there's a multiplication sign here. Even if you don't put the multiplication sign, it's understood it's there. If there's no sign here, it is multiplication. All right? Okay. So, write this. This is A into B minus C, 65 minus 56. So, now this number will come down as it is. 65 minus 56 is 9. And now multiply this one with 9. And you get 65,124. And that's what is the difference here. 65,124. That's the difference. So this you are able to find without actually finding the two products. You don't have to find the two products. This one and this one you don't have to find. Without finding the products, you get the difference straight away. Understood? This one alone I wanted to uh, practice now. OK, no, leave this one. I'll give you a different question. Open your book. Write these two. Using the distributive property. You can do it in the last page. This is, a, this is knowing our numbers. If you have that book, you can write it in that knowing our numbers. Mm. No, in future you maintain different books for different chapters. That'll be better to study. Okay, fine. Yeah, yeah. You can do that. Yes.
Yeah. Please work this now. No, darling, not the word problem. I have written something, no, only that. Sorry, I think I should have told one second. Yeah, I've given you two, two questions now, right? Work only then. Very good. You made a mistake, but I want you to find your mistake. Finished? Yeah.
Very good. Obvious, right? Save 250 rupees on Google Pay for business. Okay. So the first one, uh, obvious answer that correctly. Simple, one small mistake you did, Tanya, actually. You got your mistake? Okay, so how do we answer the first one? Uh, Satakshi, see here. So write down the question. Okay, so write down whatever is given. And then this is of the form. This is of the form A into B plus A into C, correct? Is it of that form? A into B plus A into C? Sure. Because this is the same, no? So A. Then others are B and C. So what is A into B plus A into C? A into B plus C. Okay, so what is A then? What is A? 8915 into B plus C. What is B? Plus C. Plus C. Yeah, tell me what is C. 55, that's all. Now, write 8915 into, what is 45 plus 55? Hundred. So what is this into hundred? Eight nine one five that will zero. Right. This answer with the first one. Yeah, what's on with the second one? No, just read the digits. Five, four. Very good. Correct. Very good. All right. So the next one will be something like this. I have to clear the. Okay, let me work it here. Five, Just read the question for me. Five, four. Five, four. Into three, six into five. 
Okay. Yeah, now I know. Okay. So does again like A into B, this is the question. So A into B, this is A into B minus A into C. So minus A into C is equal to A into B minus C. What is A? A is 54361. B is 23919 and C is 1319. Five four three six one into two three one nine minus one three one nine. So that will be five four three six one into thousand. So five four three six one followed by three zeros. Correct. Okay. I think now it's time we'll have to continue with ratio and proportion. So you can finish till here. This we finished and yeah, nine can oh, I think we'll continue with ratio and proportion. Deepthi, so you have to, this is your homework to do. Till here, you have to uh, work till here. The eighth one. From one to eight. Yeah, Deepthi, one second. One second, yes. Okay. You can read in your. Oh, you don't want to write the question, is it? Uh, you can, no, you can ask your parents about that. This is a. Uh, I normally prefer writing the question and then the answer. So if you're fine with that, but some children are like really good, like they keep the book aside and then the answers. And if you can really do that very with responsibility, yes, you can do that. All right. Yeah. It's not wrong. You can do that. But just tell your parents about it. Also. Yes, Deepthi. So one to eight. One to eight. We'll be uploading it in the portal, right? Yeah, I'll be sharing with the portal. Once it's done, once I upload it there, I'll let you know on WhatsApp. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Now, Deepthi, I'll be sharing another link. Okay, please join the meeting using that link. That is a link for ratio and proportion. Now, we'll be continuing with ratio and proportion. So, I'll share another link with you. Please join the meeting using that link. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, I'll just... Can the number I gave you before, the blue phone? Uh, tell me which number? One minute, Mom. Mom, uh, one minute. Is it this one, uh, which ends with eight five one double five? That's my mother number. Yeah. Yes, Mom, you can send it to that. Okay, I've sent it. Okay. Yes, thank you. Yeah, I'll end this meeting. Thank you.